just two days ago, the Trump administration retracted an Obama-era guideline that claimed the 45-year-old Title IX law required all public schools to let transgender students use the bathroom and the locker room of their choice. The White House says bathroom issues are properly a concern for state and local governments, a position that is getting the administration absolutely savaged on the left. Jillian Weiss is executive director of the Transgender Legal Defense and Education Fund. After the guidelines retraction, Weiss denounced the administration's state's rights position as nonsense. Jillian Weiss joins us now. Jillian, thanks a lot for coming on. Thank you for having me. So I believe, for whatever it's worth, in politeness and decency and not making people uncomfortable, especially children. I have four. But I also believe in honesty, and so I just want to get to what exactly this means. So I'm a 47-year-old man. I think that's pretty obvious. If I were to decide tomorrow that I was a 47-year-old woman, should I be allowed to go shower in a women's locker room? The idea that there's no objective factors to be considered in uh, who is transgender and how we determine bathroom use is really not the way that this works. The okay. fact is that people make this decision after a lot of serious consideration. They see medical doctors, there is psychologists involved, um, there's a lot to think about. It's not an easy process. As someone who's gone through that, right. I can tell you, you just don't decide tomorrow. So okay, that's really what, not the way it works. But what if, what if I did decide tomorrow? What, well, what, what should I be, and, I, and it was totally sincere. Or by the way, how would you know whether it was sincere or not, or anyone? No, only I can make that decision. And what if I did? Would well, I be allowed to go and shower in a women's locker room? And if not, why not? <laughs> Well, I think the answer is no. And for example, we have the Gavin Grimm case, which, as you know, is coming up to the Supreme Court very soon. The ACLU just put out its brief in that uh, case. And, you know, they went through what he had to address. He changed his name. He had medical doctors. He had letters from psychologists and so on. It wasn't the kind of thing where he just came in and said, oh, uh, now I'm uh, going to be using the, the boys' room. So Okay, so but let's go through just, I mean, because there's a lot at stake here, is the, and you know this because you do it for a living. There's a lot of money at stake, and there's a lot bigger issues at stake. The definition of gender itself, which is at the center of any society. So what are the absolute standards that are required for a person to change his or her sex? There is an organization called the World Professional Association of Transgender Health, which has a series of standards of care. We're on uh, number seven now, or, or eight is coming up. Um, and so this is uh, something that doctors and medical people, psychologists have worked with for years, and there is a whole protocol. Um, so, I mean, I, I can't give you the entire thing right now, but I think it's important to understand that there is uh, something called transgender, and we have been here forever. We've been going to the bathroom forever. Oh, but um, I'm not contesting any of. I'm not contesting yeah. any of that. And just, just to be totally clear, I'm not attacking anyone. Yes. But I think it's fair because so much is at stake to get much more precise than you are getting. So, what exactly are the standards? And are they legal standards, or are they standards that you agree with? I mean, what exactly? are the, stand the actual standards, because again, a lot of money is at stake here. Yes. Well, the medical standards um, require uh, seeing a therapist for a certain period of time before uh, cross-sex hormones will be prescribed, uh, a certain amount of time living uh, as the opposite sex before um, certain kinds of medical treatment and surgery would be permitted. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is that the courts have been parsing this for the last 15, 20 years. And so if uh, somebody is being stereotyped because of their sex, because they're not perceived to fit in with appropriate masculinity or femininity because of whatever people perceive as their birth sex, uh, that is something that's prohibited by the uh, okay, anti-discrimination statute. Right, so that's the anti-discrimination statute, but you still haven't explained, I've, and I've asked you a bunch, what the, the legal standards are, because I don't think that there are any, and here's why that's a concern. So we spend, the federal government spends over $11 billion every year on sex-specific programs, and I'm sure you know what they are. The Small Business Administration, among many others, gives a ton of money to people because they are women. And so how are we supposed to navigate that if there, and let's be honest with each other, there are no standards actually, other than I say that I'm uh, of a different sex. How is it to navigate this and what's going to prevent charlatans from jumping in and taking all that cash? Well, let me give you an example. In the field of athletics, 
there are standards that have been developed for when someone is permitted to move into a sp particular single sex activity. It involves how long they've been on hormones, how long their transition has been, you know, whether or not they have the strength equivalent to, you know, that uh, like in women's sports for example. So there are standards that have been developed. Now I don't know all of the details of that exactly. But well, you're asking for there example, is no how do we absolute standard that's well, been developed as you know. I mean, look, you this is your job. You know that there actually that's not true. There isn't. The WNBA doesn't have the same standard as the Olympics, as Notre Dame women's field hockey. I mean, there is no absolute standard. Well, if that's what you're saying, is there an absolute standard? You're correct. Yeah. There is not an absolute standard. We are working this out as a society. It doesn't mean put transgender people back in the closet or tell transgender youth just, you know, fend for yourself. But nobody's suggesting that, at least on this show. What I'm okay. suggesting is an adult look at this issue, and yet whenever you bring it up, like, what does this really mean? And can you actually change your sex biologically? You're denounced as, you know, as like a hater. And I'm just speaking for myself when I say that has nothing to do with it. I think it's fair to ask these questions. And so when are we going to find out exactly what it means to be a woman or a man? Well, let me just suggest this. I have a list here of 25 studies that have been done over the last 15 years by scientists, peer-reviewed journals discussing exactly what it means to be transgender, when someone is transitioning, the difference in the basal ganglia of the stria terminalis, the neuron density in the brain and so on. I'm sorry for being very technical. The point is there are biological <laughs> differences. You're big, I mean, let me ask you this. Can, if a, I mean, can you uh, ascertain a person's sex with a blood test throughout life from birth until death and will that result remain consistent? Blood, no, not with a blood test. Not with a blood test. Okay, I don't, I, don't, I don't know if that's correct, actually. But the okay, point is, well. look, do you agree that, and this is, I'll, we'll just leave it here, but do you agree that until there is a commonly recognized, legally recognized standard for sex, what constitutes a man and a woman, that we ought to slow down a little bit, stop building up all these anti-discrimination statutes before we can agree on who is being discriminated against, who meets the standard? We've had, these, we? we've had these laws in the books for the past, you know, 40 years. They have come to understand that this includes transgender people. For the last 15 years, we're all over society. We are going to the bathroom. We are showering. Okay, we are in athletics. So you can't yeah, put us you're, back. I, but no one's suggesting that. And you're dodging the question because you don't have an answer. And I just hope you'll take this seriously because I think it's a serious issue and I hope that you will too. It's not just a matter of saying we're here, we're not going away. It's a series of like doing... But you're, you know, saying, you're saying until you we have a standard, questions. until we have an absolute standard, we can't do anything. And I, so I disagree with that. I'm saying don't give $11 billion away to people who are faking. Like, what are we even talking about? Who's faking? I still don't know. Where's your evidence of faking? Tell okay. me who faked it, and then we can discuss it. Jillian, thanks for joining us. Thank you.